Well, on to more news now, and, and a disease that changed the life of a young man from almost the moment of his birth, leaving him in pain and limiting many of childhood's joys. But Jonathan Pitra had lessons to teach us all, that courage can be limitless, that no goal is too high to reach for, and that no dream is too much to imagine. Catherine Cullen takes a look at a life of challenge and inspiration. And we are here to invite you to speak on stage as a WeDay speaker for National WeDay April 1st. Wow. <laughs> wow. There will be 16,000 kids. No problem. <laughs> Jonathan Pitre's disease made his body fragile, but not his spirit. I'm in constant pain, and most of the time, I'm limited to my wheelchair. But that's the last negative thing you're ever going to hear from me. Instead, I want to share my dreams with you. <laughs> he was born with an incredibly painful disease known as epidermolosis bullosa, or EB. His skin constantly blistered and scarred, comparable to third-degree burns. A few years ago, he and his mother agreed to give the Ottawa Citizen newspaper an intimate look at his life. His story gained attention around the world and raised tens of thousands of dollars for an EB charity. He has been one of the most heroic patients I have ever known and uh, heroic people I have ever known. And I have learned a great deal from him about how courageous and determined one can be. Today, in a Facebook post, his mother, Tina Boileau, said he tirelessly fought to raise awareness for this horrific disease. I am proud to say you did it, Johnny boy. She asked for privacy for her family as they grieved a fearless warrior. People in Ottawa and beyond followed as Jonathan was in and out of hospital fighting his disease. Here he is right before heading to Minneapolis for a bone marrow transplant. So it's going to be a... Pretty tough time, so I've been relaxing mostly. Um, it's been good though. I've been spending a lot of time with my family and my dog, so just trying to spend all the memories I can with them before I leave. Among his admirers, his beloved Ottawa senators, who made him a scout for a day and surprised him in Minnesota before that bone marrow transplant. How are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you again. Oh, come on, we got a We brought the whole team for you. It's amazing the and how inspiring a kid that young can be for, for so many people. The Prime Minister called Jonathan a hero in every sense of the word, a courageous and determined fighter who persisted in the face of every challenge and who inspired so many. Ottawa's mayor called him one of the bravest people I ever had the honour of meeting. Jonathan Pitt died Wednesday from an infection. He was 17. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa. In Catherine's story, you may have noticed a butterfly in Jonathan's arm. There's a poignant meaning behind that. Due to their skin's fragility, he and others living with EB are known as butterfly children. And tonight, the Ottawa Senators paid another special tribute to Jonathan as they warmed up for their game against Pittsburgh. The team posted this picture on Instagram, the initials JP and a butterfly. EB is a rare disease in the United States, for example. About 20,000 babies are born with it each year. Not all of them have the severe form that Jonathan had, but for those who do, there is no cure and very little treatment. Some patients spend hours every day wrapping their bodies and changing dressings to protect their wounds and to prevent infection. Some have also undergone experimental treatments like skin grafts. We recently got a close look at what it's like to care for a child with EB. Crystal Normand and her husband invited us to their home to meet their four-month-old, Leo. If you were a big scary ape, I would make your birthday cake out of bananas and I would tell you, I love you. Then I'd make you a mountain of hamburgers. When Leo was born, just from the trauma, actually his feet, all the skin was removed just from that in utero friction. With Leo's skin and other people with EB, the bottom layer is anchored, but the top layer doesn't have that, uh, that holds it in place. So that in turn friction will cause blistering or the skin to actually shear right off. Every time we went out, he would have a different wound in a different place, and it was never what we had anticipated. We've had to really be creative in uh, making some 
adaption uh, adaptations to his equipment. So um, using like a foam piece in between his legs in the car seat, using padding in different areas, um, even uh, like when we're planning our routes, like we don't want to go down bumpy roads or anything that might provide um, additional rubbing on his skin. Here we go. Personally, it was really almost like therapeutic or cathartic to be able to to speak about it like take some of the the power away from the condition we tried to find the positive in every day um, every smile every every little thing um, we we don't take for granted with him of all the genetic conditions this is probably the one that's got the most hope for a cure um, or a really effective treatment and it's hopeful that that'll be within the next five years or so it's kind of um, an exciting thing for us, to pros the prospect that he could be uh, healed maybe by the time he's ready to attend school. Hello! I'm gonna show your big boy strength. Look at that. You heard Norman say she's hoping for a treatment and recently doctors in Europe used experimental gene therapy on a young patient with promising results. They took a small piece of the boy's skin, added a modified version of his mutated gene, and they grew sheets of skin in a lab. And when it was ready, they transplanted it. Eight months later, nearly all of the boy's skin had been replaced.